breaking news happens, Bay News 9 is there with more people, more resources, and more coverage than any other station. For in-depth coverage of breaking news, turn to Bay News 9, your news channel, only on Bright House Networks. We are going in-depth this Friday on a new vaccine that could save millions of lives. Researchers at the Cleveland Clinic say they have developed a vaccine to prevent breast cancer, and now they're trying to get FDA approval to test that vaccine on humans. Dr. Randy Schuck has more in today's In Depth. Joining me now is Dr. Christine Horner, a best-selling author, a breast surgeon, and a preventative doctor. So. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, you're welcome, it's my pleasure. So we're gonna talk about breast cancer. This is a hot topic for a lot of women and men, and I wanna make sure we have the basis taken care of first. Let's talk about the statistics of breast cancer itself. Sure, so breast cancer is actually the most commonly diagnosed cancer among women, and it's the number two cause of uh, cancer deaths, mm -hmm. and probably the most feared because the treatments for it are sometimes as bad as you know having the disease um, itself. So definitely a concern as a woman gets older, her risk goes up, so mm -hmm. the incidence gets higher and higher with age. And what are those risk factors, just to review it for everyone? Being a woman, <laughs> number one, yeah. so 99 percent of breast cancers are diagnosed in women, mm -hmm. and then um, all the things that we know that are like bad diet and lifestyle choices mm -hmm. for like traditionally we think cardiovascular disease, so let's say you're eating burgers and fries and junk food and not exercising and staying up you know, late at night and having lots of stress in your life, those are all the things that contribute to breast cancer too. Plus hormones, plus yes. genetics, uh -huh. plus all that yes. fun stuff. Yes, yes, so, so hormones, you know, big one estrogen yep. is something we know that fuels the growth of breast cancer so taking you know hormone replacement ther therapy can increase it and then yeah. getting pregnant later in life as opposed to earlier in life <clears throat> is that still holding water well there's a protective effect if you have a pregnancy um, before 30 and there's not you know you don't really see that much of an effect after that you know particular age <laughs> but you know all the things that we know that are standard risk factors that are identified in Western medicine mm -hmm. um, 75% of people do not have any of those risk factors when they are um, diagnosed you know, with breast cancer. So they don't have a family history. You know, we talk about things like your period you know, starts mm -hmm. earlier. What, none of that seems to have that much you know, credence with it. So it's other things which you know, is our diet and lifestyle is what the research points to. Sure, and now we're seeing it younger and younger now. I, I don't know if it's because mm -hmm. we're diagnosing it better or we're actually seeing more of these risk factors coming in play, but there's now a new key issue coming mm -hmm. into play as well. And and it perhaps is related to a virus. Tell me about that. Yeah, so very fascinatingly, like we know that cervical cancer is caused by a virus and they've developed a vaccine mm -hmm. for it. So similarly, they have found a certain percentage of breast cancers, not all of them, that there's the presence of a virus there that is called the human tumor mammary virus. Mm -hmm. And it shows up in about 40% of breast cancer patients. So the thought is is that if we develop a vaccine that would target that virus that we could at least um, probably prevent 40 percent of the cases. Sounds like a no-brainer. Sounds uh -huh. like we should be doing this just like we did for cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. So is it happening? Are we seeing some research that's proving this is uh, going to be a helpful thing? Well, actually right now the, the people that are furthest along with this is the Cleveland Clinic mm -hmm. and they're creating a vaccine that's actually targeting a protein in the breast that's made by in breast cancers, it's not normally in the breast, but made by mm. breast cancers. And so that particular vaccine is going to start clinical trials in two years, but probably won't be on the market for about 10. Yeah, but well they can fast track things nowadays. So if they find it's really useful, perhaps uh -huh. maybe we can move it a little bit forward. So why is it going so slow? Well, generally speaking, when we're working with the FDA and we're using you know a drug or a vaccine, they do a lot of safety studies and mm -hmm. the and the clinical trials are starting with very specific women who have aggressive tumors already and looking at you know preventing that from getting a recurrence. So by the time you start doing clinical trials in a preventative mode it's probably going to take that long a time before we get approval. Are yeah. they doing it anywhere else? I mean, European studies usually go a lot faster, and we see that come on the, on the line quicker. Do right. you know if there's anything on no, the other side? No, there's not. It's mostly happening here in the United States. So they're working on um, a vaccine that's targeted towards the virus, but that's way in the future. And the statistics this. is a little higher in the United States versus the rest of the world anyway for breast cancer, isn't it? It is, but you know, what's interesting is that they found that this virus is um, found in mice. 
So when you're in an area where it's endemic in mice, like in East Africa and in Saudi Arabia and kind of the Middle East area, the incidence of breast cancer is much higher. Wow, okay. Well, you're a breast surgeon, I mean, which may, basically means that you take the cancer, take it out, and then you reconstruct afterwards. And you said that can be pretty tough on the patient, so prevention sounds like a whole, whole lot better idea. Well, and even if you catch things at the earliest stage, mm -hmm. it's not a guarantee that someone's gonna live. And the whole process, I don't care how early you find it, it's terribly emotionally distressing mm. for women to go through. So, you know, how about preventing that to begin with? Yeah. Now, I, I think you're kind of well versed on this. I see you have your book with you. You want to yes. tell us a little bit sure. about what's in the book uh -huh. and then explain this stuff here uh -huh. in front of me. Sure. So uh, my book, which is called uh, Waking the Warrior Goddess, mm -hmm. um, is everything that I found in the medical research that has a statistical influence. So even the things you need to avoid or the things that you need to favor that will um, lower your risk to as low as it possibly can be. Mm -hmm. So it's all evidence-based and this is the third uh, revised edition which just came out on October 1st. Well congratulations yeah. on that. I'm sure it's very helpful. So we know that prevention is key. I think we had a nice statistic that uh, prevention is 100% effective Yes. and surgery is only so much <laughs> right, perfective. Right, right. So yes. let's talk about some of the ways that we can prevent breast cancer. Sure. So what the research points to is that our diet and lifestyle has a huge influence. Mm -hmm. And horrible statistics is that 90% of people that have had a heart attack in the United States go back to the original mm -hmm. diet and lifestyle in one year. So it's very hard for people to make those changes. But um, ideally a plant-based diet is what we're looking at mm -hmm. and each of them have you know different medicines in them. So broccoli for instance, cruciferous vegetables, Vegetables, several chemicals that have powerful anti-cancer effects to them. Mm. Flax seeds, which is you know considered the most um, powerful superfood for um, deterring the growth of breast cancers, either in prevention or in treatment. Actually, where once you get it, it can shrink tumors fairly substantially. And then mushrooms, which. Um, Mushrooms are something that help to support our immune system. So kind of the whole convergence happens when there's something that happens that really slugs our immune system. Mm -hmm. And it can be bad diet, it can be stress, staying up you know, too late at night, sugar, you know, which really slugs it. And our immune system tries to keep us well with our cells in it, but when it gets slugged, then it can't and the cancer cells can start to grow. Mm -hmm. So mushrooms are something that um, greatly support the immune system. And this is when we have that statistic where it's so hard for people to make a change. I'm always like, you know what, go with supplements first because mm -hmm. everybody can do it. It's a way you can get protection today. So there's a number of different supplements that have been found to be highly protective. Okay. So AHCC, which is a mushroom formula. So it's based on several different medicinal mushrooms. And the way it's processed is the molecules in HCC are very small. So they're absorbed into our system. We're biologically active. Mm -hmm. It's used a lot in Japan. They've done hundreds of studies on HCC in Japan. And they found that people who um, take it on a regular basis have a much lower incidence of all sorts of different kinds of cancers. They actually prescribe it in hospitals there if you have cancer because the survival statistics wow. are so much better. So ACC, yeah, turmeric. So uh, turmeric is the... Actually, um, I cook with that. That's good. That's right. Yeah. So that's an Indian spice. Yeah. And it's a cousin to ginger. And you find it most commonly in Indian curries. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's actually found to be the most medicinal, number one anti-cancer spice, inhibits the growth of 17 different kinds of cancers. Huge research, 5,500 wow. studies in the medical research, including at MD Anderson. And that's all in your book? It is. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're running out of time. Okay. But thank you so much for coming oh, today. Welcome. This is great information and I like prevention much better than treatment. So yes. thanks for coming. Good. You're welcome. <laughs>